All right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to a new day again. Uh, let's begin this time with a word of prayer. Maybe uh, Rupa, is it okay if you can please lead us in prayer? Or uh, Samuel? Okay, Rupa is available. Go ahead, Rupa. Good morning. Father, we come to your throne of grace this morning with thanksgiving and praise. Thank you for this journey you're with, Father, in each class. You have taught us your truth. Father God, we thank and praise you for our faculty. Father God, Pastor Paul, and the way he has revealed, revealed the truths to us, Lord. We thank and praise you, Master. Bless this class as we gather at your feet, Lord. Open our hearts, open our minds, renew our hearts, Lord. Minds as we dwell on your truth, Master. It was a time of good understanding and, Father, grace and power to put them into practice in our lives, Lord. Thank you for this light truth. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you so much, Rupa. Uh, all right, so this class will be our last class. Uh, what we'll do is we are in chapter 21. We look at entrepreneurship, and then we'll also look at chapter 22, workplace transformation. But what I want to do is uh, just look at the important points, uh, certain key takeaways, uh, and, and we'll apply this, if, like what we've been doing through all the uh, you know, topics was we, we have been trying to apply everything that we learn both for the workplace and translate that for the ministry, right? Uh, uh, and so we will try to do that as well. And uh, let's look at chapter 21, entrepreneurship. Right now, deciding to become an entrepreneur is exciting, right? Or even if you look at ministry, if, if you know that God has called you for ministry and you're deciding, okay, I'm going to start ministry, it's exciting, right? It, it's a wonderful season. But along with that comes risk, comes responsibility, and you know the, the whole thing of the idea that you have or that vision that you have inside to make it come forth or give birth to that vision. Uh, that is where we must be the, uh, you know, very uh, intentional where we, we need to really look at God's word. We need to uh, make sure that it is the Lord who is leading us in this direction, right? Uh, so let's look at a few points. Uh, I'm going to look talk about both in the workplace and in the ministry, right? Because both, um, I, I would say, even starting a ministry, pioneering a ministry is like entrepreneurship. Now, when you look at things that are happening, uh, there's so much that needs to be done even in ministry, uh, you know, before we launch out. So uh, let's look at a few points. Entrepreneurship, the first point, prepare well before the launch, right? Uh, I'll read Luke chapter 14, 28 to 30. If one of you is planning to build a tower, you sit down first and figure out what it will cost to see if you have enough money to finish the job. If you don't, you will not be able to finish the tower and after laying the foundation and all who see what happened will make fun of you. You began to build, but you can't finish the job, they will say, right? So Jesus is teaching us something very important here. He's saying, when you plan something, any of us, when we plan something, first sit down, figure out what will it cost. Now the word cost doesn't always mean money right it can be material manpower resources time uh, and and what does it cost to start something right one of the things that um, you know I, i'm sure many of us here are eventually planning to probably start your own ministry don't be in a hurry right it's a wonderful thing it's a wonderful thought it's wonderful that god has put a vision in your heart whether it's a ministry or even a small business uh, don't be in a hurry sit write down your plan figure out the cost okay this is going to take me you know a year for me to launch out so before i launch out what do i need 
I need uh, in terms of finances, I need to be able to, you know, provide I need this much of amount in terms of material. I need this I, in terms of manpower and staff. I, I need this many people. So we need to sit down and really count the cost. What is it going to take? Right now, when you look at ministry as well, right? Uh, say, for example, some of us are called to pioneer. Uh, the wise thing to do is to wait. You know, you can start off small. So when you look at, if you know that, okay, God has called you, uh, plan ahead, right? So you know, okay, I'm going to start a church. So, you know, the most common things you need when you start a church is one, you need your documents. You need to have all your documents, right? Two, you need a, uh, you can even look to start in a house, but eventually you can't have more than 20 people in a house and then uh, music and then, uh, you know, you don't want to disturb the neighbors and eventually you want to move to a, your you know a place which you can either lease out or buy uh, whatever works for you but if you move to a place right uh you need we need to plan okay if i move to a hall then i need speakers i need chairs i need some kind of instruments i need the mic system uh and so even before we launch out it's very important to prepare Right. Uh, I'm reminded of this young man uh, who I know, very, very uh, fervent young man of God. Uh, and we know each other from uh, Bible college days. And uh, he called me, this happened maybe two years back. He called me, he said, uh, I'm going to start a church and God has spoken to me. So I said, that's wonderful. Uh, so how do you plan to do that? So he told me, you know, I'm going to go evangelizing on the streets and then we have, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 we'll do some events, some youth meetings, we'll hire a hall and I said, that's wonderful. So, so one of the th first things that I asked him was, now we know that God is our provider, right? Uh, uh, Jehovah Jireh is our provider. We know that, right? So in no way we are saying don't trust in God. But what, we, what I told him was, even as you trust in God, prepare well, right? So before you leave your job, think about, you know, how you're going to, uh, you know, start the church. What are the equipments you need? What are the materials you need for that? Uh, he said, no, uh, I prepared all of that. But what he did was he left the job. Right? The next month, uh, he left his job. And he would stay at home. He would pray 20 days, 30 days, fasting and praying, which is wonderful. You know, spiritually, he was growing very strong. Uh, God also gave him the idea. But the problem was, I remember he called me and he said, you know, God gave me so many ideas. I have so many ideas, but I don't have anybody to help me execute it. And he said to me, uh, I don't feel like asking people for money. Right? Because initially in the ministry, if I ask people for money, um, you know, it's not going to sound good. Now, that is also right. Uh, so I told him, why don't you get a job? Work for some time, save up some money. In the meanwhile, you also do ministry. And then, you know, you you can look to buying the equipment, buying things for the, for the church. Uh, but he didn't want to do that. But eventually, you know, uh, they... Some, you know, somebody had provided and they got a house for, got a, sorry, got a hall for lease. But, you know, he, he also told me that they were struggling. They want, they didn't have chairs. So they all were sitting down and, uh, you know, it was not a well, and the flooring was not done. So there was a lot of dust. Children would fall sick. Uh, and there were only about 15, 20 people. But then, uh, the, you know, every time people walk in, the dust would rise up. Many of them fell sick and there was no speakers. So he would have to scream and his voice was, uh, you know, affected. And so uh, after he shared all of this, I always I thought to myself, it is so important to prepare well before we launch out in anything. This could be ministry. This could be a business. This could even be an idea that God has for us, right? A, a plan, or it could even be, uh, a move from one city to another or from one nation to another nation. Everything needs good preparation, right? So thorough preparation before launch is very important, right? Two, uh, determined to do business or ministry God's way. Very important. 
determined to do business or ministry God's way. As part of preparation, right? Uh, we always want to, uh, we want to see numbers. We want to see growth. We want to see, uh, you know, uh, things growing very fast in whatever we are starting. Uh, a few decisions that we, or a few questions that we can ask ourselves is, do I want to launch this ministry or business alone on my own? Or do I want to do it with partners? If I want to do it with partners, who are the co-founders, right? Uh, or what, what do you want the, uh, the vision of the ministry or the, or the work, the business to be? So all these things make it uh, in line with biblical principles. Right. So when we set up uh, something, you know, OK, I am going to follow biblical principles. These are principles that I'm going to do. These are principles that I will follow in my business or in my ministry. Now, many a times when you look at, you know, in ministry, uh, we may end up, you know, in a bid to become successful or in a bid to, you know, uh, become famous or see early success, uh, we may end up taking the wrong routes or measures uh, in ministry and business. Right now, we must be very careful of it. Right, don't don't fall into uh, a trap of early success fame. Uh, let God take its time. Let God take him take us through his processes. No, um, it's wonderful because see your process or preparation is going to be different from mine, right? If God is preparing me for something ahead, the way he prepares me is going to be different to the way he prepares you, right? And so we must be willing to determine how God takes us through. But when we know that and we are, you know, we stand on the fact that, okay, whatever I do, I'll do it in a biblical way. I will use biblical principles. Uh, that is going to bring blessing and success uh, upon our work and our ministry. Right? Uh, one of the things that uh, at APC, you know, when we launched out in, uh, when we went to Mangalore, you know, uh, I've said this many a times, we were a couple of people, maybe eight of us, seven, eight of us, and then uh, families and people started coming to church, but then they were coming from other churches. So I had to really make sure that our church is standing on good foundation because it was the initial days. So I would always tell them, right? Uh, uh, I would ask them, why are you coming to this place? Why aren't you going to that church? Uh, and so they would say, you know, the timing. So they would give other reasons. Uh, but I would tell them, go back, tell the pastor, write a letter to them uh, stating the reason why you're coming why you have left that church and why are you coming here? Uh, give them that letter, thank them and honor them for pouring into your life. You may have been there for a year or even six months. It's all right. They have poured into your life. So, uh, you know, and that way we are standing on good ground and we are following biblical patterns, right? Uh, finally, depend on the spirit of God to empower you in your workplace and in your ministry, right? I, I I always say this to young people who you know a young man uh, who was just 23 years old. He came up to me and he said, uh, "Pastor, I'm going back to my hometown and I'm going to launch my own ministry." The first thing I said to him is, "Depend on the Holy Spirit, and two, don't be ashamed of small beginnings. Depend on the Holy Spirit. First thing, don't be ashamed of small beginnings. You know." Sometimes God has, you know, given us so much of talents and gifts, right? Um, maybe we are good at speaking with people. We are good at managing our finances or we are good at, uh, you know, uh, uh, writing or, uh, you know, playing the instruments, worship leading or preaching, uh, all of these things. When we're good at all this, sometimes it's very easy to put God in the second place. And we may say, okay, God, I know how to do this. I've been leading worship for 10 years now. So uh, uh, we may not, you know, say it. Like, you know, we may not, with our mouth, we may not say, God, I can manage this. But our attitudes can show that, right? When we don't depend on God, when we don't depend on the Holy Spirit, uh, and we say, okay, I can choose five songs, 
make it sound good uh, make it sound like they're very powerful songs and uh, it's okay i can make sure that the worship goes on well but if i don't depend on the holy spirit it's like saying it's like me depending on my own skills and abilities uh, which is not going to last fruit or bring fruit right? uh, uh, because remember what the bible teaches us uh, flesh will give birth to flesh and flesh profits nothing that which is born of the spirit will give birth to the spirit right uh, very very important especially those in ministry we must not try anything out of the flesh right we must always depend on the holy spirit and i think i've shared this with you right when i initially went to mangalore i thought okay i can do this i can lead worship i can uh you know i can go evangelism i can preach i can teach uh so it was like a one-man show right and uh, i kept thinking to myself okay i can do it i can do it until the time came when i saw that it was over a year in mangalore and nothing i could do all i did a lot of things right I, I we did a lot of things evangelism and spent many hours reaching out to people but i didn't see the fruit of it so i would always ask god god i struggle so much why is it why nothing's happened it's been a year and the lord very clearly ministered to me and i thank god for that right that's where the holy spirit brings conviction clearly ministered to me and said you are doing this on your own ability you feel you can lead worship you feel you can preach the word you feel you're good in evangelism which you are you go you know you may have the talents but even as you have the gifts and talents surrender that to god and depend on the holy spirit and the moment i did that i stopped evangelism for some time i remember we as a church got together and we said let's do 21 days of fast again prayer and weekly prayers and then i saw something of course even we also did evangelism reaching out to people but i saw families coming in i saw students coming in what i did for one year i i burnt myself out struggling and struggling and reaching out but here all i did was depend on the holy spirit wherever i got opportunity share the word and god started wonderfully bringing people <laughs> and so don't be afraid of small beginnings as well Right? We looked at this uh, many uh, chapters also uh, previously that small beginnings is 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 how God usually works. Right? Every almost nine out of ten ministries would have started with two, three, five, ten people. Nine out of ten businesses would have just started in their rooms or in their houses, which have gone on to become multi-million dollar businesses. Right, uh, 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 and so uh, I, was, I was reading this, uh, uh, you know, whole article about Amazon. Now Jeff Bezos got this idea in the early 1990s, uh, and you know his own friends were making fun of him. Who is going to go online and order something, and it will come to your house? Uh, why is it so complicated? Right? Who's going to do that? uh and i remember also there's this interview i think if you get on youtube you can see it um where the interviewer in the early 1990s right the interviewer is asking uh, what is this company that you have started right you've got about five six people what is this company what's the big deal about what you're doing and he said uh, no now with the access of computers what we want to do is we want to uh, build up a system where people don't have to go to the supermarkets or the uh, stores but you can all order online uh, and it can all come home and the interviewer actually laughed right uh, uh, and it was like a mocking laugh but Jeff Bezos was he didn't he didn't say anything right he just kept quiet because he knew the vision that he had when you look at him now and you look at it what what's happening now uh, anyone can order on Amazon even people in villages are you know probably aware of how to order on amazon and they are reaching out and we know that he's a multi-million dollar man but it all started off small right as we apply this in the workplace we can also apply this 
Uh, now, I'm not saying Jeff Bezos followed, uh, you know, godly principles, but what I'm saying, what I was trying to get at was that uh, when we start with small beginnings, don't be ashamed of it. People may ridicule, people may mock, uh, but don't be ashamed. Right? Remember when, uh, uh, when you know, the people of Israel came to the wall of Jericho and they were just walking around it. They were being mocked by the by the people. Like, what are these people doing? But it's all right. Don't if God has put that vision, God has put a plan in your heart. Go go ahead with it, right? Uh, trusting the Lord. Next one. Don't be distracted with quick success. You're in for a long haul. Now, Proverbs twenty twenty one. Don't more easily you get your wealth, the less good it will it will do you. Right? Don't be distracted with quick success in business. Maybe suddenly you're, you know, if you're if you're starting a business, maybe in a year or so, you may see very good success. Don't be distracted with it, right? Don't let the quick success of fame or money get into your head, or it it, it can take control. Last week, we, yesterday, we spoke about money and how important it is to uh, handle money the right way. Stay focused on the vision. Stay focused on the mission. Stick to your values, and and continue on the same on the same path. Now, when it comes to ministry, you may have started small. Uh, all of a sudden, you may see success. You may see from ten people, your church is suddenly in one year has grown to a hundred people. Now, don't let that success get to our heads, right? Uh, uh, sometimes what the mistake that we can do is we can look at others and say, hey, that church started 10 years back, but I started only two years back and I have 100 people. That church only has 70 people. And so, you know, pride may come in. Uh, we may think, oh, you know, uh, we may get distracted with the success that we have tasted at an early age or at an early time in the business or ministry. Don't let it distract you, right? Remember, especially in ministry, this is not competition, but we have one body, right? So uh, it's sad to say that in many cities that I've been, uh, I've seen it as a competition. This person, okay, when did you start the church? Okay, how many people in the church? Okay, how did you do this? And then they, it becomes a competition. Stay away from it. Don't be distracted with all that. Keep the vision in your heart, keep the vision in your mind and say, God, this is what I'll do. I'll do the right way. Two, three, don't be hasty for profit. Uh, refuse to take shortcuts to make quick profits. Don't compromise on your values and principles uh, to see success. Now, this is uh, this can be translated both to workplace and, uh, you know, ministry. Uh, you know, especially if you're a pioneer in the ministry and you know the funds that are coming in uh, and all of a sudden, we, if we are not careful uh, with ourselves, then we may end up taking up shortcuts uh, to make a quick buck or to make a quick profit. Uh, and, and so we must stay away from that. Just keep your hands as clean as possible. That is why, uh, you know, I think next year, uh, you will have church administration uh, and you learn about how uh, church needs to be or ministry uh, needs to be function, right? Uh, it's not just one person doing everything, uh, but you need to have certain uh, uh, things set in place so that, you know, the organization, the, the, the ministry does not fall. Uh, and as a leader, we must be careful in that, right? Don't be hasty to make profit. Uh, I like this next point. First, plant your fields, then build your barn. Proverbs 24, 27. Now, imagine we build a barn uh, without planting fields. It doesn't make sense uh, because we're going to have an empty barn and then, the, uh, and then we're going to wait for the harvest to come. Now, uh, what makes sense is you, you first put the harvest, put the plants down. You start uh, planting the fields. You sow your seeds. You look after them, and then when uh, when the time comes, when the harvest comes, you know, okay, I can build a barn now, 
and uh, I can prepare for taking all the all the uh, fee, all the crops, everything that has been harvested. I can prepare to put them in the barns. So, why is this important? Why why is uh, why is the Bible mentioning this? First, plant your fields, then build your barns. The Bible is teaching us something important here. It's teaching us to stay focused on what is important, right? What needs to be done first? So here, he's saying, first, plant your fields, then build your barns. Don't do it the opposite way. Don't build the barns and then plant your fields and, and then say, OK, uh, no, plant your fields. And during the process, now, now if you, I'm just giving an example, right? Uh, not sure about the time frames, but just an example. So if you put a, a seed uh, on the fields, you've, you've, you know, you're looking after it, and you're expecting, you know, you, you know, it's going to take, for example, a year. Uh, now, eight months down the line, you can see how the crops are doing. Okay, and you feel okay. This year, I'm going to get a good harvest. So, uh, the barn that I prepare must be this big so that you know everything can go into this so probably about the eighth or the ninth month you start preparing uh, for the barn now the wrong thing to do is wait till the end and then when the time of harvest comes oh where do I store up my uh, crops or where do I store up the harvest now right? so see what is important first every area it needs to be done but stay focused on what is important and then go to the next step, right? Uh, the barn can be built, but first the fields have to be planted, right? Uh, now, even in ministry, uh, uh, in in business too, uh, in ministry, if there are there are things that need to be done, and you know, uh, okay, this has to be done. Set priorities. And one of the things that we personally do as lead, as leaders is we have so many things to you know, look at many, sometimes it's probably a house visit, praying for people, our own ministry preparation, preparation of, uh, in teaching of course material. And sometimes we lose track, right? So it's very important as leaders to, you know, now that we have a lot of convenience on Google calendars and on, uh, or you can also, you know, have a physical calendar on your table and you can mark things that you want to do, or you can have a to-do list, uh, you know, sometimes what you can also do is when you switch on your laptop, Google Calendar will remind you your tasks ahead uh, for the day, for the week, or for the uh, next 15 days. You can set it up that way. So uh, so you can set up your priorities and make sure that uh, it's done in the right way. Keep a close eye on what brings in the bread and butter uh, as your business, as the ministry is taking shape. See which areas are profitable see which areas are working out well you know one of the things that we did in ministry in mangalore uh, you know we tried everything but one of the things that really worked right uh, was something called as worship evenings so what we would do is friday evening we would make invites one hour of worship and prayer right uh, basically it's more of worship right we worship and in between the songs we spend time in prayer uh now when we started it uh well there were a few people who joined but then we started reaching out to people students giving out invites and then slowly we saw that people started coming in uh at one time we had a big concert uh and we tried that but we did not see any fruit out of it so we said okay let's stick to what we know best. Let's stick to what is really working out in this city. Right? This is something that's working out. And we continue to do that, right? Uh, so keep a close eye on your bread and butter, meaning what what is uh, which area of your work or your business or your ministry is bringing forth success, right? Uh, now, for example, there are churches where the women's ministry is doing really well. Right? So you can encourage them. Or in some places, it's the youth ministry. You know, you have full of youth in the church. Uh, they are doing really well. So you can target youth and say, tell the youth, okay, let's reach out to other people. Or in some places, we have uh, you know, families that are very close-knit together. They are willing to reach out and invite new people. So whatever it is, 
keep a close eye on that and try to build on the places that we are you know successful we are seeing success in stay clear of the pride that comes with success proverbs 16 18 pride goes before destruction a haughty spirit before a fall right as we see success as we see you know uh, success coming in continually pride is the problem here as the business grows as the ministry grows you know when you start off in the ministry uh, uh you know small small ministry you have 10 people you know whatever it is you'll go you'll go street evangelism you'll go to house visits now, all of a sudden as the church grows and you know maybe you we are uh, coming on tv and become famous our songs have become famous the sermons have become famous uh, pride creeps in pride is dangerous pride is destructive pride comes before the fall right pride comes before the fall always remember this right? this verse is so true if pride is coming in our hearts be sure that it's only going to be destructive to our lives to the moment pride comes in we are to say god help me to walk in humility ask the holy spirit to humble us and we operate on the principles of god's word always the best way is to say god acknowledge what god has done say god it is not me but it is you who has blessed me with this it is you who has blessed me with the ministry all the people here i started off with five six people now we may be 500 or thousand people but it's not me it's not because i can speak it's not because of my talents and abilities but lord you are building your church the moment we sit on that foundation the moment we are strong in that area pride will not come in so stay very very careful and be very very clear about certain things right uh, especially in ministry stay away from it uh, because pride is if pride comes in be assured that it's destructive and can be dangerous to the future so just say god whatever i have is from you the moment we stand on that foundation you know the enemy is not going to let pride come in right uh, next point uh, your personal income and your benefits keep it right uh, for example as a pioneer uh, now there will be times uh, you know you would like to enjoy your hard work uh, and the fruit of your hard work but do not do that excessively meaning don't indulge too much uh, in lavish spending and uh, you know uh, especially on your own now now I want to be careful here, right? Um, when we start a ministry, right? And you know, okay, the ministry is growing. I'm just going to use ministry as an example here. You start a ministry and you know that the ministry is growing and all of a sudden you have a lot of finances, you have a lot of money coming in, right? And now when we look around the world, we see this as a problem, uh, right? Uh, it's good. God blesses us with money we can enjoy the benefits of our hard work right if we need certain things we can go ahead right uh you know uh, buying a car buying a house nothing wrong with it but when you indulge in greed and lavishly use it uh, which is not going to be profitable to oneself or to the ministry or to the business then that is not acceptable right avoid excesses uh, uh you don't have to prove people some anything right always you don't have to prove others okay this is what i have this is my house this is my uh, car this is my other car these are my bikes and these are my uh, assets that i have we don't have to prove anything right in a day and age when we right now we see a lot of you know uh, ministers of god who have become very rich and they uh you know it's very sad to see it right they they show off with it or you know they say okay i bought this jet and that jet and 
Uh, they buy a couple of private jets and uh, there's so much that's happening around the world. No, no, it's not wrong to buy things for their personal needs. If, they're, if it's ministry, it's all right. Uh, but what I'm trying to get at is God blesses us. We're not to be greedy of it, greedily use it and spending it lavishly on unwanted things. We don't have to prove a point to anybody, right? Uh, Proverbs 30, uh, I like this, the end verse, verse 9, who is, uh, who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and profane the name of my God. Remove falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with the food allotted to me. So wonderful this is. Uh, he's saying, don't give me poverty lest I uh, you know, curse God. Don't give me uh, too much of riches lest I forget God. Uh, let me be a person who will be you know, satisfied with what God is giving me. Right? Um, uh, next point, uh, multiply what you have by empowering others. Again, it's a very important aspect on leadership. Delegate, give responsibilities, train people. And then if you, you know that they're going to you know, do something, they're very good at it, develop it, grow, multiply. Uh, then you have the woman entrepreneur who needs to be a virtuous wife, a mother, and a homemaker. Now, this is uh, women entrepreneurs are on the rise over the past decade, we've seen plenty of them, and it's wonderful. But always remember, uh, if, if it's a married woman uh, who's starting a business or a ministry or an entre uh, as an entrepreneur, uh, she must make sure that she has these three aspects of a virtuous wife, a mother, and a homemaker. She cannot you know, put these three aside and say, hey, I'm an entrepreneur. No. Uh, I'm reading this uh, article by a very famous um, businesswoman she she went through a lot of hardships um, as a young woman uh, as a young married woman she pursued the whole thing of wanting to start her own business and uh, she had three children and and they were all tiny children uh, but he she went through a very difficult time she would you know try to look after the kids and also you know uh, look after business but but with the wisdom of god she was able to you know uh, look after her children in the right way and also her business began to flourish and uh, one of the things that I forget her name sorry uh, 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 but one of the things in that article that said was she said was in a bid to gain success or uh, gain uh, you know earn profit earn money uh, I made sure that I was there for my children so that when I grow old they will know the importance of family. Uh, and she very clearly says that her children as well uh, work in such a way, they're all, now the business is a big business, gone global. Uh, but she still says, if I have to go back and be a wife, a mother, and a homemaker, I will still do it because I, she didn't regret any of those times. Uh, and her children also have grown up so beautifully with with this whole understanding of you know money is not everything uh, relationships are greater than all of that so uh so this is the whole topic on entrepreneurship let's just quickly we have 10 minutes uh let's quickly get into workplace transformation before that any questions on entrepreneurship uh, what we just looked at chapter 21 any thoughts any questions how many of you are planning to start your own uh, business or your own ministry? Uh, is there anyone here? Uh, is that? Okay, Samuel. Yes. Uh, right. Anybody else? Yes. Samuel, is that your own ministry you're planning to start? Um, yes, Pastor. Both. Um, both. Um, an organization as well as a ministry. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that's wonderful. Thanks, Samuel. Thank you for sharing. Anybody else? Uh, okay, Louis says you're going to start his own ministry. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, okay, Prabhakar is praying. For, yeah, take your time. Pray. Don't be in a hurry. Hear from the Lord. and Only then start. Very good. Anybody else? Uh, you plan to start your own ministry, your own business? Uh, 
if the Lord has put it in your heart, uh, you know, sometimes we may feel, God, I'm not qualified enough or uh, I'm not a good speaker. You know, I love what God tells Jeremiah. He says, Jeremiah, don't give excuses saying you're too young or you don't know how to speak. I'm going to go with you. Same thing he said to Moses. Don't give me that excuse that you don't know how to speak. I'm going to go with you. Right. Uh, and so be assured that if God has put something in your heart, pray about it uh, and go forth boldly. Uh, you know, in the book of Revelations, uh, the Lord Jesus is talking to the church in Philadelphia and he says, I've opened a door ahead of you. Go and enter into it boldly. Right. Uh, so be assured that God is with us, no matter how big or how small that vision is. Uh, God is with us. He's going to help us. Right. So that's wonderful. Let's get into chapter 22 quickly. Workplace transformation. Uh, uh, initiate a culture shift. Now, uh, in the workplace, it's very important to bring transformation, bring changes. Right now, uh, uh, the Lord Jesus commissioned his followers to be salt and light. And he gave them the reason to do that. He said, OK. If the salt is of, if the light, if you're the light, you're going to be on top and people are going to watch you. Uh, you're going to be a light to the people around. And if you're salt, you're bringing flavor to their lives. But if the uh, salt loses its saltiness, it's of no use to be then to be trampled. So all of a sudden, Jesus is initiating a culture shift. He's trying to change the disciples and he's saying, this is how God wants us to be. He wants us to be a light. He wants us to be the salt. Uh, and so Jesus was trying to influence his disciples. And he did it in such a beautiful way. Right? He didn't say, look what I'm doing and look at you. Why are you all like this? No. He, he brought it forth through words of wisdom. right? Uh, and so we can do that as leaders. Bring forth transformation through the scriptures. Now we have the entire scripture with us. So bring forth changes. Bring forth uh, culture shift uh, within the organization or within the ministry as well, right? Create constructive changes, right? Uh, small changes can make big differences, right? But those small constructive changes can, you know, and uh, can influence uh, an entire, you know, sector of your ministry or your business, right? Uh, so apply these principles that we have learned all through this uh, entire course, uh, we can apply principles and see constructive changes in our workplace, in our ministries, right? And we looked at um, you know workplace relationships. We looked at uh, uh, you know uh, the topic on vision, mission, values, and cultures, and we looked at how important it is to have that set in place, uh, whether it's a business or ministry, right? So. You apply that. Uh, third point, be a transformational leader. Now, there are two kinds of shepherd. shepherds. One, the good shepherd who puts himself ahead uh, of the sheep, uh, which means the Lord Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. He gave his life. Uh, and then there's the hired shepherd. Right? Uh, a, a shepherd. If he's looking after his own sheep, he'll give his 100%. David says it wonderfully. He says, you know, when I was looking after my sheep, if there was a bear or a lion, he's telling Saul, I have killed it with my own hands. Now, David was a young boy. And if you see a lion or a bear, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not a simple thing. But he went and killed it. Why? Because it was his. Imagine David had to look after somebody or... Imagine any other shepherd who had to look after somebody else's sheep. The moment he sees a lion or a bear, he's going to run for his life. right? Uh, so there are two kinds of shepherds, the good shepherd and the hired shepherd. And instead of taking care, the hired shepherd, instead of taking care of the sheep, he's going to uh, you know, abandon and run away. Now, a great leader or a good leader will always be there for his people. Right, good leaders care and serve the people that they lead. Right, the transformational leader will set out to transform 
uh, he, he, he seeks to transform the lives of the employees. Uh, he seeks to transform the lives of the customers also, people who are being served in the organization. So one of the questions that you know we can ask ourselves is, what kind of a leader are we? Are we like the good shepherd or are we the hired shepherd? When troubles come, do we run away? Or do we stand with our team and say, okay, let's fight this together. Uh, or do we run away and say, okay, their problem, their headache, let them manage with it. Uh, no, God is calling us to be good leaders who can bring transformational change in people's lives. That's the last point. Demonstrate the kingdom in the workplace. Acts 17, 16 to 17. Now, while Paul wasn't waiting, waited for them at Athens, his spirit was provoked within him when he saw the city was given over to idols. Therefore, he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and with the Gentile worshippers and in the marketplace daily with those who happened to be there. So wonderful, right? Paul went to the marketplace and he began to bring the gospel to them. Uh, God is involved in the workplace. And sometimes we think, you know, we especially when we look at cities like Bangalore or IT uh, centers, where uh, you know you've got so many businesses and uh, you know uh, this whole you know huge buildings and we, you see people going to work coming going to work coming uh, you may you may feel that okay this is what life is but no God is interested God loves to get involved in the workplace our knowledge our science our technology our intellectual uh, provinces we have gained all of this uh, from the in the workplace uh, may not satisfy uh, but when we when we look at God we say God it is through you it is by you and it's from you that we have all of this God can minister to us at the workplace not just on Sunday church services but we need to be people who can demonstrate the kingdom of God wherever we are in the workplace, uh, in colleges, in schools, and not only on Sundays. And here's the best part. Even as God has called us to serve, He, we, we, we serve through the gifts of the Holy Spirit that he has given us and empowered us with. Amen. Amen. So I had a wonderful time teaching this entire uh, course. And I personally have learned a lot of things. Uh, I hope that each one of us have taken up uh, and, and, you know, the Lord, the Holy Spirit has uh, really empowered us, put, uh, you know, has given us insights from this lesson, uh, from this course. And I thank you so much for journeying along. I know it's a lot of material, uh, but I tried my best to, you know, bring in uh, even the ministry aspect to it. And so we bring this sec session to a close. Uh, uh, we will not have classes from next week onwards, but I will post the final assessments by today, the end of day. And this will be an open book exam. I put the due date too. So uh, just take uh, some time, fill in your uh, answer sheets and post them. I'll put the guidelines in as well. All right. Uh, let's close in prayer. Uh, yes. Anyone, anyone can please close in prayer. Abraham, can you close? Yes, Pastor. Thank you. Precious Father, we thank you for bringing us to this conclusion. Father, we are grateful for all that we have learned. And we pray and ask for the grace and the wisdom that we will not be Sunday Christians, but will be Christians all the time in our workplaces. That, Father, we can be examples at our workplaces and also to impart the world as you have given us. Father, we thank you for our pastor. We thank you for the opportunity you've given him to release what he knows to us. Father, we pray that we'll be good stewards of everything that we've learned, that we'll be able to pass it on to other people. Father, we thank you. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Abraham. Thank you, everyone, uh, for journeying along with this. May the Lord bless you. Uh, hope to see you next year as well, next semester. Uh, have a great time ahead. God bless. God bless.
bless bye bye thank you so much pastor god bless you too thank you pastor thank you god bless god bless